Astronauts Tom Akers, Janet Cavandi, and Sandra Magnus, all graduates of Missouri University of Science and Technology, journeyed back to campus to speak on their spaceflight experiences before a sellout crowd and later sign autographs. Each graduate tells us what influenced them to become astronauts. I, I can't remember a time when I didn't want to be an astronaut. I, I just remember from being a very small child here in Missouri, gr growing up in a, on a farm uh, where you could see all the stars at night and um, see the first satellites and the first people were flying in space. And I remember my dad and I talking about what it must look like from up there. If you were a space person up in, in one of those spaceships and you looked back on the Earth, what would it look like? And maybe that thought just stuck in my head and I thought, well, I want to find out. <laughs> I want to <laughs> know what it feels like, what it looks like to be up there and looking back here. And what would you see and how would people look? Could you even see people? Could you see what people have done here on this planet? And, and you can very well, by the way. But I guess just the curiosity and the desire to go and be there kind of took over my imagination and, and so I, I worked very hard in school uh, to study math and science and eventually ended up here and, and got my master's here in chemistry and then went on for a PhD in the University of Washington but always having this ultimate goal of flying in space. I had I had probably Tom, but I had a picture of someone in an EMU above my desk in college um, and, and underneath it said never give up. And so that was sort of my whole motivation through, through school and my first jobs is to keep trying until I made it. I'm just the opposite. It, I was 30 years old when I got a ride in the back seat of an F-4 and got interested in flying in the Air Force. And uh, I was too old to go to pilot training, so I ended up getting into test pilot school as an engineer, a backseater, just to get in the flying business. Primarily, I love my job, desk job, but it's like, boy, if I could go fly two or three times a week, that, that was fun. So at test pilot school, you see all the pictures of the old Apollo astronauts, the Air Force guys that had gone through the test pilot school, and that planted the seed that, hey, you know, going through the test pilot school might make me qualified to apply to the space program. Never entered my mind before. And so when I was 31, I was in test pilot school, and I applied for NASA two years later, got selected two years after that, and, but up until 31 years old, it never entered my mind that that was even a, a possibility. I'm more like Janet. I was in middle school. <laughs> there wasn't one crystal moment that I can remember when it just, oh, I'm going to be an astronaut today. It was more, um, I've always asked the question, why? I drove my parents crazy with the, why does this happen? Why does that happen? They bought me a book, it's 200 questions why, trying to shut me up. I don't think they were successful. Maybe it worked for a couple months. Um, that's what led me to physics, really, more than anything, just trying to understand why. And the idea of, of flying in space and looking down at our planet, I think, is a dream that would inspire anybody. But the, working on the technological edge of what people can do and exploring boundaries and pushing boundaries back, all that just coalesced and it's like, oh. I'm going to go to space and be an astronaut. And uh, like Janet, I worked really hard in school and um, you know, slowly made my way to the office um, with different sets of experiences and just when I applied, I hoped for the best and I was lucky enough to get in.